Welcome back to the channel, hosers. Sorry for the delay in getting this video up to you. I keep promising in the comment section that I'm going to show you how to remove the magazine tube plug, but uh, I've just been so busy. Uh, you can see I'm drinking Gatorade here, which I never drink. I always drink coffee, but my electrolytes are low. I've been getting a lot of chocks lately, and let's just say I've been leaving electrolytes all over the place, if you know what I mean. So I'm finally going to get to it. It's going to be a short, quick video. I think I've addressed pretty much everything I can address with this rifle uh, shotgun, my apologies, in previous videos, so go back and watch them. Uh, I'll just show you how to remove this plug and uh, the accuracy I'm getting with it. So we've got dummy rounds here. You can see I'm trying to get this on camera so it's a little tough, but two rounds and won't go in, right? So Canadian hunting laws, I don't know what they are in the States, um, but we can only carry two. So how it works is, and I think I've done a pretty good job explaining it with words, but I will try to get this on camera. Uh, let me see, I don't know if this is picking up or not, but essentially, uh, maybe this will work. So this right here is your barrel, your projectile comes out of there, and this is your magazine tube, all right? So this little piece of plastic right here is the plug. That's all it is. It's just a little tiny piece of plastic and it just kind of goes in there and you just have to remove it on a uh, push in and kind of wiggle it out on an angle and voila, that's it. That little thing right there is what's holding this rod in place, okay? That's it. Now there's no constriction, your plug is out. So to put it back in if you're going hunting, so when you go to the range, you take it out. To put it back in, the rod goes in first and then this little cap, again, I, I hope it's picking up, but all you're going to do is push in, compress, and that's it. Just wiggle it in. It just kind of angle it in, and when it, it goes in on an angle, and when you let it out, it, it springs out. So that's it. Super simple. Uh, it's one of those things that, you know, it kind of befuddles you until you've seen it done or, or do it yourself. Uh, simple, easy. And as far as the rifle, uh, sorry, again, not a rifle, shotgun. As far as the shotgun goes, uh, just quickly show you. Uh, I did a quick sample, three rounds of Remington. I believe that's the Remington Slugger. Three rounds off of rest, all touching. Uh, this is with the aim point, so obviously my aim point's off, but three rounds touching. Federal Premium, 25 yards, you know, uh, a thumb. This one, I don't recall the ammo, but by this time, I remember I was a little fatigued from shooting it. So the group opened up a bit, but again, you know, from a $550 semi-auto loading shotgun, that's perfectly acceptable. These, you know, when I was fresh off a of rest, beautiful. Uh, I mean, what more could you ask for? I prefer when I shoot 50 yards uh, because I'm shooting with the aim point. I, I shoot at steel and all day long at 50 yards you're ringing steel no problem um, not more not much more to say about this firearm that I haven't said uh, it's been super reliable the only issues I had originally were with some ammo uh, if you watch the first video you'll see a nice beautiful fireball I was getting fireballs coming out of the ejection port, but I think that was chalked up to the ammo I was using. The one thing I will mention, and I, I hope you did stick a lot, uh, stick around to hear this, is um, this is the Canuck Engage, and I was on the fence between this and the Canuck Operator, and the Operator is a true clone of the Benelli. Uh, I went with this one just because I liked the collapsing stock and the look of it a bit better, and it was a 300 bucks cheaper um, but my good friend from the club got the operator and the one thing we've noticed with his operator is it's having some issues and I'm not going to say reliability issues because it, it, the issue is with certain shotgun shells the extractor is so it's it's sprung so tight that it's literally ripping through the cellar and balot rim so you see this little rim, obviously the ejector catches it, pulls it out. The, I, and again, I don't have that, I don't have that issue with this, this firearm with the same ammo, but with the operator, 
it's literally ripping it right through leaving the shell behind so you fire it the round stays in the chamber and all you're left with is a big rip in the brass of this and you have a, a fail to a fail to eject and a fail to feed and a jam and it's happening pretty consistently so i don't know if that's specific to his operator that he got i can only tell you what i observed and that operator is doing that so guys let me know in the comments if you're having that issue with your operator because uh i'd like to help them out and uh i'd like to know if it's a recurring problem or if it's just a one-off or what have you but otherwise uh five six hundred rounds through this i've actually put more more in ammo through this than what i paid for the thing uh it's been super reliable no issues whatsoever uh, my sample size is strictly 100% slugs. I haven't actually fired any bird shot or any type of shot through this, so it's 100% slugs. Uh, fit and finish, I've mentioned before, you know, it's a little lackluster, but it's still holding up pretty good um, without me babying it, as you can see. I hope it's picking up. This is all just oil. So if you have any other questions, let me know. But guys, I hope this little trick helped you. Well, not a trick, it's how you do it. But I hope it helps, and if you have any other questions, let me know. Take care.